welcome to the final edition of Beyond the Arc. This season here on High School Cube News, Brian Shemina with you once again with Michael O'Brien of the Chicago Sun-Times. Mike and I were both down in Peoria this past weekend for Class 3A and 4A State Tournament. You can check out all those videos right here on the website. So we're just going to kind of wind down the season here on the show. And Mike, let's start with the two champions, Morgan Park, Class 3A, back-to-back -back state champions. We didn't know what they would be. They lost Billy Garrett. They lost Kyle Davis. How'd they do it again this year? Because it seemed like they were underdogs. Yeah, they, they definitely were. You know, Lamont Walker and Josh Cunningham are just solid players that not only do it on the offensive end, but on defense. Lamont Walker proved he could step up and score more. So that really filled a big, big hole for them. And then the backcourt got better throughout the year. You know, Charlie Moore still isn't rock solid, still isn't spectacular, but he was good. And that, that was really all they needed with that backcourt. It was a deep team. You know, Marcus Johnson coming in and starting in the state games, and he played really well. A lot of rebounding, a lot of defense made up for the turnovers and the lack of a real explosive scorer. For the Whitney Young Dolphins, preseason number one, postseason number one. Jalil Okafor didn't get player of the year, but I think he'll take the moniker of state champion over that. Uh, I, I'm <laughs> sure about that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy. You know, this is the fourth year in a row. My preseason number one has finished number one. It was kind of easy with the Simeon years. <laughs> so this year is a little tougher. But yeah, there's no doubt. It, it's really important. I don't think we can stress that how important that state title is for Jalil Okafor's legacy in Illinois. You know, now you can put him up there with Quinn Buckner and Derrick Rose and all of the greats, the winners. There's a lot of great players, but they also didn't have state championships, and he's got that now, so he's in the upper echelon. We saw a lot of great games this past season, starting with Curry and St. Rita, the Pontiac Holiday Tournament, and we had a great postseason. Mike, when you look back on this season, what are some games that really stand out? Yeah, the Stevenson Marion Catholic game was fabulous. You know, Stevenson played so well as a team, and then Tyler Eulis stepped up at the end, scoring those 26, scoring or assisting on 26 consecutive points. That was great. A lot of great games at Pontiac, St. Charles North, and Simeon, and all the overtimes was super fun. You know, that, that was one of the highlights for me, I think, definitely. And then the city championship game, I mean, nobody's ever going to forget that, regardless of the fact that it was wiped away from history now. You know, Curie against Young, all those overtimes, Alexander against Okafor. We're not going to have a season like this probably for a few years, at least. The top 25 this year was kind of like a game of Tetris, shuffling around, falling in and out. What were some rules? We had a lot of great teams this year, Mike, maybe more than so at the top than any other season. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, some teams just sort of disappeared there at the end, like Larkin played such an amazing season. I really thought they were going to make a run in 4A. Then Kendall McCollum gets suspended for the first playoff game, and they're gone. So there were, a lot of, there were so many great teams that even that second tier of teams, they didn't get a lot of the attention they might have in other years. I mean, you look at Viator. They came pretty close to knocking off a great Stevenson team, and that's a team that was in and out of the rankings this year because they did lose some games they probably shouldn't have. When you look at Curry, they officially finish 0-26, 0-27. How do we look back on the squad? Yeah, I should probably answer that question too because I did not put them in the sometimes final Super 25. I generally just base that based on how teams do in the playoffs. Once a tournament's been played, who really cares about my opinion is sort of my opinion on that. And... Technically, Curie, with their eligible team, was 0-1 and lost in the first round of the playoffs. So that makes it hard to go back and try to put them much higher. Everybody knows what happened and will remember it, but still, it's a team that didn't even win a regional. So when you look back, you know, Cliff Alexander's Player of the Year, Curie had a fabulous season, but you, you're not going to see it in any of the record books. It'll be interesting to see what Pontiac decides to do if uh, Curie's going to wind up in the program next year as the champion. You mentioned Cliff Alexander winning player of the year, but you kind of look back on the great players we saw this year, incredible. You could probably make a case for seven or ten guys being player of the year, and I couldn't disagree with them. Yeah, there are four rock-solid choices. You know, Stevens and Jalen Brunson won the Gatorade Player of the Year award for the state of Illinois. Who knows who will win Mr. Basketball? Tyler Eulis could be the best player in the country. I mean, he's that dominant of a guard. So yeah, it, it was just a phenomenal year full of just unbelievably elite high-level talent for one area. And unfortunately, this season could be remembered for more off-the-court stories than on-the-court stories, starting with Cliff and Jalil's recruitment to the last couple of weeks, all the way to Birdgate we just witnessed this past weekend. Have you really ever seen a season quite like this where there's so many off-the-court stories? No, it's been bad. And I I think what this season will be remembered for in Chicago is just violence. Uh, Hyde Park's best player, Malcolm Whitney, was shot and killed in July. You know, that started it out. Then you have, you know, Marshall assistant coach Sean Harrington, who's a big member of the basketball community in Chicago, shot and paralyzed. Then a few weeks later, Tyquan Greer, 
you know, shot in the, in the calf, the, the or player. So that, that's what Chicago's going to remember about this season. Yeah, there's the state championships, but it was a really upsetting year in a lot of ways. So before we end the show here on High School Cube News, we've got to whet the appetite of you fans for next season. Mike, can you give us a top three, top five teams we should look forward to next year? Yeah, you know, we'll watch the summer play and the fall leagues and all that, but Stevenson has to be the favorite right now to pick up the preseason number one. They've got a lot of guys back, including Jalen Brunson and Connor Cashaw. Simeon has almost everybody back as well, so they'll be competing for it. And another team to keep an eye on is definitely St. Joe's. You know, Nick Rekasevic, you know, might be the best sophomore in the whole state. They're going to have Glenn Watson and Jordan Nash back. So that's a team that has a whole lot of upside. And that'll wrap up another season of Beyond the Arc right here on High School Cube News. Thanks to the crew, Melissa, Chris, Peter, and Dustin, and also Beth Long, driving around Chicagoland with all the MVP segments. So for the last time this season, for an exhausted Michael O'Brien, I'm Brian Shimino. We'll see you guys next year.